Hello and welcome to this episode of the Science of Agriculture. Today we will be talking about an age-old tradition and industry that has been providing livelihoods to millions of people across the world, sericulture. In the previous video we discussed up to the Moonga silk moth. Today I will discuss volcanism and biology of silk worm. Let us start. Avi silk moth Also known as Andy or Irandi, Avi is a multivoltine silk spun from open-ended cocoon, unlike other varieties of silk. Avi silk is the product of the domesticated silkworm, Philosamia ricini that feeds mainly on castor leaves. Ericulture is a household activity practiced mainly for protein-rich pupae, a delicacy for the tribal. Resultantly, the airy cocoons are open-mouthed and are spun. The silk is used indigenously for preparation of chadders for own use by these tribals. It is also found in Bihar, West Bengal and Urissa. Boltonism Boltonism is a term used in biology to indicate the number of growths or generations of an organism in a year. Number of generations per year 1. Univolting referring to organisms having one fruit or generation per year 2. Vivaltine referring to organisms having two fruits or generations per year 3. Multivoltine referring to organisms having more than two fruits or generations per year Univoltine Univoltine races produce only one generation per year. The eggs leave remain in a dipausing condition till the next spring. Larvae of univoltines are very sensitive to temperature and other environmental conditions. They are unsuitable for summer and autumn rearing by artificial breaking of egg dipoles. The cocoons produced are commercially very superior. Vivaltine Vivaltine races have two generations per year, the first generation adults developing from eggs hatched in spring lay non deposing eggs. The second generation adults developing from these eggs lay eggs which remain in the dormant state till next spring. The larval duration is as long as univoltines. Larvae are robust and tolerate environmental fluctuations. They can be used for summer and autumn rearing and three crops can be raised per year. Multivoltine Multi or polyvoltines have more than three generations per year. The larvae duration is short and larvae are resistant to high temperature and high humidity. Larvae and cocoons are small in size. Commercially cocoons are of poor quality. The adults lay non-diposing eggs. Life history of mulberry silk worm, Bombyx mori. The adult of Bombyx mori is about 2.5 cm in length and pale creamy white in color. The entire body is covered with scales. The males have longer antennae and narrow abdomen while the female has small antennae, large and flat abdomen and is less active than the male. Due to heavy body and feeble wings, flight is not possible by the moth. This moth is does not feed during its very short life period of 2 to 3 days. Fertilization Fertilization is internal preceded by population. Just after emergence male moth copulates with female for about 2 to 3 hours and if not separated they may die after few hours of copulating with female. Adult Moth the adult Bombyx moths do not take any food and incapable to fly. Their lifespan is only 3 to 6 days. The whole body along with wings remains covered with epidermal scales and the body is divisible into 3 parts, viz, head, thorax and abdomen. By technique antony. Mouth parts are 
are located between the compound eyes, which include inactive coil proboscis. The male moth has eight abdominal segments with a pair of hooks half at the caudal end which help in copulation. The female has larger and fatter abdomen than that of the male which has seven segments. A knob-like projection covered with sensory hairs at the caudal end of female is present. It can secrete pheromone. Egg The clustered eggs always remain covered with gelatinous secretion of the female moth. The color of eggs depends on moth race. In diapausing eggs, the color changes from light yellow to deep brown when they enter diapause. Diapausing races, the color of eggs does not change till the development is complete. The eggs are ovoid, spherical or ellipsoid in shape and are flat on one side through what eggs remain attached to the substratum. Larvae The newly hatched larvae are about 3 mm long, black in color and is covered by bristles situated on tubercles in each body segment. Young larvae soon after hatching start feeding on mulberry leaves and grow. This period is called first instar. After about 3 days, larvae stop feeding and undergo ecdysis, shading of old cuticle. This period of ecdysis is called molting. After molting, the larvae start feeding again and grow rapidly in size. They repeat the molting process usually for four times and thus the larvae or caterpillars get changed into second, third, fourth and fifth instar stages during the whole larvae period. It takes about 21 to 25 days after hatching in case of multivolting moths or 24 to 48 days in case of uni or pivotine moths. The fifth larval stage is the longest stage when the larvae show maximum consumption of mulberry leaves and high growth. The full-grown 5th instar larvae are 7.5 to 10 cm in length. Its body is divisible into three parts, small head with special spinneret through which silk is exuded. Thorax with three segments, each with a pair of broad true legs which are not used for walking but for holding the leaves. While feeding. And abdomen with 11 segments. The 9th, 10th and 11th abdominal segments are fused together to form the apparent 9th segment, anal plate and pair for the prolegs. Each third, 4th, 5th and 6th segment bears a pair of fleshy, two jointed muscular protuberances, known as pseudolegs or prolegs, each bearing curved hook on the outer edge of leg tip disc. The 8th abdominal segment has a projection on dorsal side, called caudal horn. The most characteristic feature of silkworm is their silk gland which is well differentiated in 4th and 5th instar stages. The larvae have sexual dimorphism. In female larvae, the sexual marking appears as a pair of milky white spots known as Ishivata's gland, one each in the right and left sides of 8th and 9th abdominal segments. In male larvae, the reproductive gland appears as a small milky white protuberance at the center of the ventral side between 8th and 9th abdominal segments. This gland is known as Herald's gland. Right larvae The full prune final 5th instar that has stopped feeding and ready to spin the cocoon is called ripe worm or ripe larva. It is translucent as the gut discards all of its green content. The body of ripe worm shrinks in length. The worm stops feeding and usually moves towards the edge of rearing tray. Cocooning The ripe worm after being shifted to mountage passes last excreta which are red in color due to presence of tryptophan metabolites. After emptying its gut, it first secretes a tiny droplet of silk, the anchorage spot, which hardens and sticks onto the mountage. The lava then anchors itself to that spot and spins a loose hammer forming the framework of the cocoon. During spinning, the secretions from two silk glands come out through the spinneret independently as fibers and called prints. 
the secreted sarsen of both plants cements these two grains in a single thread called pabe. Pupa. Once the cocoon formation is over, the larvae molt inside and transform into pupae. This is known as pupation. Before transforming into proper pupa, the mature larvae pass through a pre-pupal stage during which dissolution of many larval organs like silk gland, molting gland, abdominal appendages take place. It is followed by the formation of adult organs during pupal stage when a pair of large compound eyes, a pair of large antennae, four and hind wings, legs, etc. become prominent. In the female pupa, a fine longitudinal line joining the 8th and 9th abdominal segments is present on the ventral side. In male pupae such line is absent, instead a small opening is present in the 9th segment. Usually female pupae are larger and heavier than the male pupae. Thank you.